Hey everyone, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin this video that is going to help you in your phase one current affairs of RBI, SEBI and NABARD. I will definitely try to look at these news from a different perspective so that it will become easier for you to memorize them. Okay, so on that note, let's begin with our first question and let's see what we have in this video. But before moving on to the first question, let me inform you that the PDF is downloadable, this PDF. And the link of this PDF is basically the, this PDF can be downloaded through the Telegram channel and the link of that Telegram channel is in description below. So you can download this PDF from there. Now let's move on to the first question. Where will India's first laser infrarometer gravitational wave observatory project be developed? So all these cities in the options belong to Maharashtra. So clearly the state is Maharashtra, but which is the exact place? So here Hingoli option D is the right answer. So over 200 acres of land has been allocated by the administration of Hingoli for this project. Now what this project is all about, let's understand that. So guys, the very first thing that you need to understand here is that this is an observatory and any kind of observatory is set up to study astronomy. So obviously this is going to study the principles of astronomy and fundamental physics. Now, what technique would they deploy in studying that? This is something that we can very well rest on the scientist because we are not scientists, we are the bankers you are the bankers guys who would work in RBS Abhinavad or any other bank. So from that perspective, you don't have to go into the details of it. From the exam perspective or for the general understanding of this project, you can just understand it that it is for studying the astronomy and basic fundamental physics. Okay, so that would be the purpose. Now, this project was approved by the government of India in 2016 only and right now the land allocation has been done and because of that precisely it was in the news. Now, do remember the country with which India is collaborating for this project. So, it is USA. So, India's Department of Atomic Energy and Department of Science and Technology has both of these departments have signed an MOU with the National Science Foundation of USA. So this foundation is the more, uh, most important organization here, apart from these two departments. So National Science Foundation of USA, along with other national and international research and academic institutions. So all of them are going to collaborate for this India LIGO project. So this project is being led by four Indian institutions. Now guys, remembering so many institutions which are a part of this observatory is not going to be fruitful for you. Okay, so you have to strategically prepare for the examination and the max question that can be asked in the exam from this news would be like where this would be developed, the exact location or the year in which this project was approved or the country with which uh, India is collaborating or even if they want to go into the macro details, micro details, they can ask you the organization with which India has signed the MOU for establishing this observatory. Okay, so here this news ends. Now let's move on to the next question. Which state has launched India's first WhatsApp chat bot to apply for a ration card, launch grievances and get access to other critical resources? Tripura, West Bengal, Maharashtra, Assam, Uttarakhand are in the options out of which West Bengal is the right answer. Dware Rashan is the recent initiative that has been launched by the West Bengal government in order to deliver the ration at the doorstep of the people, okay, of the uh, ration card holders. Now, this is another initiative, which the West Bengal government claims that it is the first of its kind initiative in the entire country, wherein they have launched a chatbot that will help the customers in, the, in creating their own ration card. Basically, they can file for the ration card, apply for the ration card. They can also launch complaint against the PDS distributors if they are not functioning properly and they can also apply for other resources that are available under the PDS system. So that is the chatbot that the government of West Bengal has 
launched so this is for the very first time in india that such kind of a chatbot has been launched for the pds system okay so do remember this thing now next point here is that this chatbot will help the farmers with verified information pertaining to paddy related procurement okay so it is also going to benefit the farmers as well next question is which company has signed a contract with airbus defense and space uh, which is a sp spanish company for exporting its counter measures dispensing system to airbus so we have been given the uh, five options out of which bharat dynamics limited is the right answer guys this is munitions india limited this is one of the seven entities that were created out, out of the ordinance factory board can you guys tell me the other six entities that are remaining in the comment section below because this is a very recent news so let me test you how much do you remember tell me the names of the other ordinance factory boards uh, ordinance uh, companies that have been created out of the ordinance factory board now coming back to this news it is nothing but the contract that has been signed between indian company bdl and the spanish company airbus now as per this contract do listen to me careful indian company will export its system this uh, countermeasure dispensing system cmds to the spanish company airbus that is a very re uh, reputed and established company okay so this highlights the effort and the achievement of india towards becoming self sufficient in defense equipments as well as exporting defense goods okay so on that note guys i'm going to ask you another question can you tell me what is india's defense exports target by 2024 to 2025 basically fy25 this is your another question do mention it in the comment section below even if you don't want to answer the first question that i asked you from the ordinance factory board but do not skip this question because this is related to the target of the government of india and it can very well be asked in your examination so do mention it acha do remember this thing if you can because sometimes it has been seen that recently rbi sab in about tend to ask the amounts involved in the contracts important contracts okay so if you can remember then do pay attention to this as well how much remittance has india received in 2021 as per the world bank so recently world bank has come out with its report on remittances and according to that report india has received the highest remittance uh, in 2020 one and the amount is us dollar 87 billion now i hope that you know what remittance is so for the students who are watching me for the first time or who do not know about remittance so let me tell you that remittance is the money that is sent to the people of india now why would the other people sending would send money to indians basically suppose if there is a family in my family you can take the example of my family if my brother is going to australia for work and he is working there and if he sends money to us for our survival then that money would be counted as remittance okay so this is the transfer money that we get from the family members who are working abroad so that is the remittance now india has received the highest amount of remittance in 2021 that is the good achievement we can say probably because we have such a huge population that they also work in other countries so obviously they send money back to their parents to the family members who are living in india so that is something that we are capable of right now that is a very good point guys actually so the name of the report is remittance prices worldwide database now what are the highlights first of all we are talking about the global scenario so the growth rate in remittances is 7.3% for 2021 the total amount is 589 billion us dollars okay do remember that we are talking about the complete year and this has not completed yet so it is expected that in 2021 7.3% would be the growth rate of remittances to low and middle income countries okay all the portions that have been boxed here are the key points here 
नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज दैट इट इज फॉर द सेकेंड कंजेक्यूटिव ईयर दैट रेमिटेंस फ्लोज टू लो एंड मिडिल इनकम कंट्रीज एक्सक्लूडिंग चाइना आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू सरपास द सम ऑफ एफ डी आई एंड ओवरसीज डेवलपमेंट असिस्टेंस सो बेसिकली वॉट दिस पॉइंट इज ट्राइंग टू से इज दैट रेमिटेंसेज आर ह्यूज एंड दे आर दैट ह्यूज दैट दे आर सरपासिंग दम of fdi plus odi okay so one hand we have remittances which are greater than the sum of fdi plus odi in low and middle income countries okay do pay attention to that now <coughs> world top remittance receivers in 2021 india at the top then we have china mexico philippines and egypt outlook for the south asian region remittances to south asia is likely to grow around 8% to us dollar 159 billion in 2021 forecast for the 2022 this is important every statement that i mentioned in this particular report is important okay remittances are projected to continue to grow to 2.6% in 2022 worldwide so that is also important moving on to the next question which bank has launched micro credit facility for street vendors under the pm street vendors atmanirbhar nidhi that is pm swanidhi with common service centers sbi hdfc bank idfc first pnb and canara are in the options so here the right answer is hdfc bank so giving you the brief about this entire news because this is nothing but the collaboration between the hdfc bank and the common service centers okay so hdfc and common service centers have collaborated to provide the pm swanidhi schemes benefit to the village level entrepreneurs okay so that is the basic purpose hdfc will provide the benefit the scheme of pm swanidhi to the village level entrepreneurs by using the network of common service centers and in order to make it easier they have used the platform of digital seva okay so digital seva platform will be used to provide the pm swanidhi scheme to the village level entrepreneurs in the rural india okay so only this is written here now do remember this point this is the crux of pm swanidhi which aims to provide 10000 rupees work uh, working capital loan to the street vendors at an interest subsidy of 7% it's subsidy not interest rate okay so that is all about this collaboration between hdfc bank and this uh, common service centers now this line would appear confusing therefore i told you the entire crux of this news beforehand moving on to the next question and this is really really important question so do listen to me carefully which of the following <coughs> sorry is not a recommendation of rbi's working group on digital lending so let's have a look at the statements first it aims at enhancing customer protection and making the digital lending ecosystem safe while encouraging innovation the group was formed in 2019 january 2019 uh, auditable logs should be maintained at every fintech platform to track the activity that a user performs on the app an anti predatory lending policy may be framed by each lender based on the characteristics to be defined by rbi or the proposed sro research by the working group has shown that 600 out of 1100 lending apps basically are fake okay now which is the wrong statement here the wrong statement is this one because this group was formed in 2021 now let's have a look at the statements here first the very first statement is that this group was formed in 2021 the head of this group is jayant kumar dash okay dash or dash whatever you would pronounce it so this committee or this working group has submitted its recommendations the very primary aim of the recommendations is to 
ensure consumer protection and make the digital lending ecosystem safe while encouraging innovation nothing to memorize here it's very basic next point is this that the group has recommended to establish a nodal agency that would verify the digital lending applications very important but at the same time very basic point next is the group recommends setting up a self regulatory organization that would cover the participants in the digital lending ecosystem so again a basic but an important recommendation that there should be a self regulatory organization as we have in many sectors okay for example the association of mutual fund industry it is also a self regulatory industry so similarly we have many industries working at many organizations working as the self regulatory organizations for different sectors so this group is also recommended uh, recommending that why not to have such a self regulatory body for the digital lending applications okay next point is that there should be an anti predatory lending policy by each lender <coughs> and the and the framework of that policy should be made by rbi or the self regulatory organization next point is that in the medium term till the nodal agency for verifying the applications or the sro is not set up the central government in the meantime can come out with a legislation which can uh, ban the unregulated lending activities in india research by this working group has shown that 600 out of the, these many 1100 lending apps are currently illegal in nature so they are not fake but illegal in nature certain baseline technology standards should be developed when it comes to digital lending application and compliance with those standards as a precondition of offering digital lending solutions should be made compulsory so basically technology ke liye bhi there should be a framework not only for the conduct for the manner uh, of your conduct but also for the technological platform that you are using you should follow certain guidelines certain framework auditable logs should be maintained at every fintech platform to track the activity that a user performs on the app and every fintech app must be signed or verified in a secured manner okay so that is also a very basic point that uh, auditable logs should be created or on every fintech platform for two purposes first to keep a track of the users activity okay because it will later on help in resolving dispute if any arises secondly it will also help in verifying the fintech app in a secured manner so that is the last point of this report and this is the last question of this video who is the author of lal salam a novel now let me tell you the person who has authored this novel this is the first novel of that person and that person is also a minister at this point of time so clearly here the answer is smriti irani now do remember it is her first novel and here this video ends guys if you liked the content that has been provided to you then please subscribe our channel hit the bell notification and also if you are a bit generous then also like this video as well and share it among your friends thank you so much